Right everyone, big game tomorrow for Celtic and it's not just me doing the preview this time, we've got Jackie on the channel, uh, Jackie I put on one of your favourite kits I believe, yeah. um, deliberately of course, uh, what was your favourite kit you played in in your years in Celtic? Yeah I think away ones, I think between that one and the, the Bumblebee one, they were my two favourite away ones, um, Bumblebee will be 96-97 season, Right. Uh, Home kit, I'd probably say the last one I wore, Limbro in uh, 2004-2005 season. And does what you achieved in them uh, impact how much you like them or did you just like those kits? I just, uh, probably a bit of both to be honest, a bit of both. Um, but the the Bumblebee one we, we didn't achieve uh, much in it, yeah. but I like liked the strip. But the black one... Yeah, we won the league and stuff with that one. But you've got on. La- Larson Seven in the back as well, Jackie. It's not got yeah. your name, sadly. I would, ha- um, I would have exactly the same. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cracker. Um, right, we're going to chat a wee bit about uh, what's coming up tomorrow at Tyne Castle and also looking at um, midweek, maybe a bit of VAR chat as well. Uh, Wednesday night, 4-0 over Motherwell. What did you make of that? Yeah, I thought they were excellent. Um, clinical at times as well. Um, you know... Sometimes these games can be a potential uh, banana skin in the cup away from home. And Motherwell have been actually quite good this season so far. The new manager has come in and done well. So, no, I thought it was a professional performance. Um, you know, it could have been more as well. The keeper had some good saves. Are you sensing, like the rest of us, that it's a, a weird time to support Celtic? Like, I don't know if you feel this, but it felt at the start of the season like we were all talking about the Champions League and all just so excited and probably still on a high from last season. And in the last couple of months, like we have been winning, still winning the majority of games, but it's just been a bit weird for whatever reason with games getting called off and, you know, Champions League not quite living up to expectations. Do, do you sense now that maybe we're ready to go on another really good run after the last couple of games? I hope so. I think that's that's what you're looking for. You know, you, you do go through little um, patches there. You know, then I think what you see is the initial bit and everything changing from last season. The the football that played and then teams try and come up with a plan to stop that. Mm. And that's that. You know, would it be systems or whatever or tactics to try and prevent the way Ange wants to play and we and then that that's when you've got to look at changing again keep moving forward and keep, you know, uh, freshening things up. It's not helped with certain injuries to key players as well. You know, McGregor's been a big loss, but um, you're hoping that the ones that are getting an opportunity now will come in and take that opportunity and, you know, and, uh, and kick on. It just, obviously, the timing of it has been pretty crucial in terms of the Champions League, you know, to have that with a fantastic result. Uh, with Dundee United and then they went away with an international break. Uh, um, you know, it's they came back from that and it's been a bit sort of stop start. And, but again, you're, you're, the levels have went up. The Champions League is a different level, and that's that's what we're finding. Yeah, who are you enjoying watching right now in the Celtic team? Uh, I think consistency wise, um, I think Vickers is is very consistent. I like him. You know, how, how good how good do you think he is? I think he's he just goes about his business. I I do like him yeah. that way because he's he's no you know you look at him and he's no you know he's no. <laughs> does he look like a player? He's just, he does his job. He, do, he does what you want yeah. him to do. He's he's good enough on the ball. He start things off. He's strong. He's not the biggest centre half out there, but he's so strong and powerful. He's reads the game well. Um, and I think he's missed when he's not there. He's he's missed, and that's that's a big sign when you see that. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed watching him, um, uh, and obviously Jota has has been great this season when he's played. A bit unfortunately with injury in the last few weeks, but you hopefully he'll not be too far away. Now you mentioned for Hatati as well for just for me because I absolutely love the guy. I just thought on Wednesday night at. At Far Park, everything we did went through him. His, his touch is so good. Some of the, the kind of one-touch passes that he produces as well just, you know, completely opens up the game. I don't know if we've got another player like him at the moment. Yeah, I thought he was good tonight. I think we we Hitati, I think, you know, he had a difficult match last week against Leipzig. You know, there's a wee bit more and growing and certain wee things there. And you're hoping that 
uh, he'll get confidence from that the other night because I, I do think he has got ability the boy. I think he's he was great initial impact when he came into the club. Um, tailed off towards the end of the season just with fatigue because he's playing a long season. Um, and you know, but he's he scored some important goals as well. Um, you know, the Rangers games and different things. He's I do think there's a lot more to come from him. I agree with you. I think um, I'm a hope that he'll take a lot of confidence around that and take that into the uh, the Champions League games as well. Yeah. Um, some comments from Motherwell goalkeeper Liam Kelly in midweek, clearly in awe of Celtic, saying you can just see that Celtic's confidence is through the roof just now. You notice that on the pitch. They take more risks. They have uh, so much belief in themselves. Rangers was still a really difficult test for us as well. And when you switch off against either of them, then you are in big trouble. But Celtic are obviously playing really well now. They are the league leaders. They are the team to catch. And when they play like they did on Wednesday night, it makes it very difficult for us. I know we lost that game at St Mirren that you mentioned and St Johnson very nearly took points off us. But it just seems to me that when, when Celtic play anywhere close to their best, like we did on Wednesday night, like, I think we can play even better than we did on Wednesday night. And it just seems to me like Scottish teams just, just can't really deal with us at all when we're when we're playing like that. Yeah, I think I think when they're on the ascendancy and, and getting the goal, once they get the goal, you know, yeah. the early, then teams, then you can see them like, what do we do? Do we come out? Do we go and change our shape to go have a go at Celtic? I, I think the importance of getting a, an early goal at times you know, is uh, is so beneficial. The, the goal the other night, getting it close to half time as well. You know, and it knocks the stuff out of the opposition. The right, what do we do? Second half, the manager's got decision to make. Because um, what you usually find is most teams will try and stay in the game against Celtic, and you know they'll, they'll know at sixty minutes that Angie's going to make changes. You know, three, four subs at least, and freshen up his front, his front three or whatever. Um, or attacking players, so you know I, I think looking at the opposition, that's that's what they're trying to to stem to make sure they don't concede in that time frame because Celtic they put so much work into that first hour in yeah. terms of getting on the ball, not even necessarily attacking, but just making space for each other, closing down, harassing, pressing from the front, and everybody backing that up. So that that does take a lot of energy. And, as you say, it comes down to individual players and individually, you know, in, in the league, they're, they're, they're far, far ahead of the rest of the opposition, you know, and that's, you know, they're fitter, they're technically better as well and they've got, he's got so many good options there to, to use. Yeah. Um, on to tomorrow, big one at Tynecastle. Hart sitting seventh in the table, 14 points after 10 matches, four defeats from the last five, big defeats as well, 4-0, 3-0, 5-1 and 2-0. The other game was a draw at Kilmarnock and they scored in the 94th minute of that one to get a draw. So they're not in a great place right now. On top of that, um, injury-wise, they're, they're missing a lot of players. Craig Halkett, Kai Rolls, Benny Beningame and Liam Boyce all ruled out. There's also doubt over Nathaniel Atkinson, Andy Halliday, Peter Haring, Michael Smith, Josh Shinelli and Gary mckay Stevens. So it's a hell of an injury crisis going on there. Is it the perfect time to play Hearts? Yeah, I mean, I don't think Andrew would be too worried about um, Hearts' um, injury list or anybody else, you know, for that matter. He'll be just be focused on you know, even with a, a, a fully fit Hearts team, you still be going about it the same way and wanting to get the result and believing they will. Um, the same with the players. So, yeah, Hearts have been through a, a tricky period at the moment. You, you, you kind of get the feeling that because they've not been used to the European experience and having to cope with the demands of that, uh, whereas, you know, Celtics had to, to do it for, for numbers of years. Uh, have a big game on the Thursday night, if you like, and then having to turn around on the Saturday, and you know, there's no rest. And even though your squad's not big enough, and one or two injuries can really hurt you, uh, is what we're seeing for Hearts just now. Um, have you seen much of them in Europe? Because uh, I've seen bits, and I've I, I hate yeah. to say this ahead of tomorrow and all the risk that goes with saying that, but I've really not been impressed at all. No, they've not. They've not done well. They've, they've again things that they might get away with domestically, you know, little mistakes here and there, but not punished the same. And we're not talking about the Champions League level, we're talking about Europa and Conference League level. So there's, there's 
you know, and another step up from that, but they get punished, you know, whether it be Fiorentina or whoever they play or Zurich, they lost goals against and um you know, they have they have struggled to keep clean sheets as well. Yeah. Um memories of Tyne Castle for you personally, anything that, that sticks out from your kind of time as a player or a manager there, just in terms of the overall experience of, of playing there or managing there? No, I think as a player it's I am I'm, I'm sure you'll see every player that they loved playing there. I did. I thought it was a great they're on top of you. Um I loved that. I loved the atmosphere there. Uh got a couple of goals there in my time, which was a bonus. Uh, either end so but no I, was, I, I always enjoyed playing at Tyne Castle um, you know it's so compact the atmosphere is brilliant and uh, it was good obviously we used to beat them all the time there and all so when you say they're, they're, they're close to you like or they're on top of you what does that mean they're just really close to you can you it's feel the stand, atmosphere I, more I understand the side when you're putting well, I was playing full back so you know yeah. you're, you're right there and you're taking a throw in or you hear everything and um, you know, the it's N- nice things. I take it really nice things. Always, I you. always, always nice. Yeah, um, <laughs> but that's the wee things that I said I enjoyed that. Enjoyed that. Um, would it be there, Ibrox, Mister Road, whatever? You know, and then the way grounds there, it's part and parcel of it, and you you've got to handle it and embrace it and show why you're you're at a club at Celtic. So it's a it's a tough venue as well as being an enjoyable one. It can be, yeah, it can be. As you said, if if they're playing well and doing okay, it, it can be a, a, t- a tough venue and they're 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 well backed the Hearts fans, but you know, that's that's a, the the big bit is to silence that and turn that around by you know, by beating them. Uh, so would you, would you look at a player like James Forrest tomorrow who's played in that ground many times, has scored many goals in that ground and, and, and start him specifically for that tomorrow? You could. I mean, James will be used to it. Yeah, we used to it. Um, he might, he, Ange might freshen that up. With, you know, from from midweek, he might start him as well. But again, I suppose the the good thing is he has got a lot of options. You know, <clears throat> I think this time last year, or the different injuries that Ange had. If you go back to this time last year, it was who was going to play through the middle. He didn't have a. You know, Kyogo was injured. It was it was a real scratch head moment. Um, you know, he's putting different people up. So it's Ryan Christie through the middle at times. Last, last time last year, so it shows you how how far the uh, the club has come in that that space of time with the the players that he's got. You've got Jack and Marcus, Kyogo, Meda, Jota. You know, it's it's um, and you you can see that even getting stronger. Yeah, we we obviously Jakimak has got a weekend in a knock. I think at the end of the game on in midweek, we'll wait and see what Ange says later today. If both of those players, you know, Jakimak and Kyogo are fit, who would you go for tomorrow up front? Um, it's a tricky one. I, I, I can see space in there. If, if there's space to hit, then you would go Kyogo. Mm-hmm. But going to some places there where it's a battle, and you know, and if they're getting behind, which they might do, um, put everybody behind the ball. The Jack and Marcus, you know, if you are going to put balls into the box, he's physical enough to to handle his back to goal, whereas Kugel is better facing the goal or running towards the goal. Um, you know that that that's the beauty uh, that you've got there too. That are, that are so different um, depending on how the game will go. Yeah, I remember last time we went when we had that kind of injury crisis, and Jack and Marcus had a, a great game. I think he scored that night. So that, that's playing in my mind. I think I would go with him tomorrow. Um, but we've got loads of options there as well. I think that midfield's looking really good. I'd like to see Moy starting again because I think he's really coming on to a game. And it, it's just a case of us turning up and playing our football. And I think, you know, if we turn up and play our stuff, I could see us winning by a few. Yeah, and I think Angel have won eye on next week's game as well. You know, the, the Shakhtar game. I think he'll be looking at that and, and seeing what... Uh, what his plan is for that and who's starting. You want everybody fresh for that as well. Um, VAR uh, in place for tomorrow. It starts tonight at Easter Road, Hibs v St. Johnson. I did a full video yesterday, a bit of an explainer on the channel, so check that out. Um, if I push you for one thing you're looking forward to about VAR and one thing you're dreading about VAR, what, what would you say, Jackie? Uh, it's, di- it's well, difficult to find something that you're looking forward to, I know. But. No, I think the, it's 
looking forward to is getting the res- the the right decision, which say it be a, an offside an offside one. You know that you know they're clearly onside. We've had that recently, or a, a red card. Um, the the bit I'm not looking forward to is even when you can see that that's the decision and it should be changed. They don't, <laughs> which you'll yeah. see the num- a number of times down in England. Uh, you think, all right, VAR's going to change that. So it all depends who's sitting in the wee office making that that call. Um, you know to change it. That will be the frustrating thing. Well, tomorrow it's uh, Stephen McLean in that wee office and uh, Nick Walsh is a referee on the pitch. So it's kind of like a, a dream team. Start as you mean to go on, so we'll see how that goes. Um, are you generally looking forward to it? Are you, are you excited about it or do you just kind of feel nothing? I wouldn't really? say I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm be interested to see what difference it makes. Because, right. you know, um, it's. I mean, England is said to have it, and it's, you're still getting problems and different issues, uh, even with goals that went over the line and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see what what impact it has. I mean, we, even the referee. Look, at referees. Referees are not full time in Scotland. Yeah, they've all got other jobs. It's their side, their side job, if you like. Whereas England are full time professional, so you've got VAR and everything else, but you don't have the the, the referees getting full time. Um, coaching if you like or, or fitness or whatever it is so we're still still way behind yeah maybe i'm the only person in the world that's excited i think i just kind of i just want to see how it works i want to see how much of a, a disgrace it's going to be and what horrendous decisions we're going to get we, we are televised tomorrow so i think we're going to have the kind of full var version with 12 cameras so again we'll have to see what um what kind of uh, scrutiny we're placed under in terms of in comparison to the other matches. But um, there, there's going to be drama this weekend, isn't there? It's uh, You know that's the one given at the end of the weekend we're going to be talking about, you know, some big decision. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this time it'll be about the VAR not changing it. You know, it'll yeah. be about the referee being biased or cheating or whatever it is. It'll be, you know, why... I'll be criticising VAR or whoever is in the the office to, to change it. Yeah. Um, just looking forward, you mentioned the, the Shakhtar game. Uh, I think tomorrow and Shakhtar, and then we've got five after that before the World Cup. So still, you know, a lot on the line between now and the, the World Cup. Where do you want to see Celtic at by the time the World Cup uh, takes place? I think, uh, I think obviously, the, the aim is to win... Um, win every match. Uh, I, I'm capable of doing that. Obviously, the Madrid Shakhtar will be a tough game next week. Madrid will be tough. You know, it's that that's three bits we've learned this 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 season so far. As much as we think we've we've came on, we're still a good bit behind at that level. But we are. I mean, there's not massive. It's not like a, a massive gulf. It's just been clinical belief and. And having experience at that level, when you've got to get a chance, you've got to take it, and you've got to keep things tight at the back and concentrate. Domestically, you know, getting in, I think the the team just keep winning and trying to extend the gap, which they're capable of doing. I, I don't see anything else but that, to be honest. I think they're way out just now. Rangers got through the other night and a lot of criticism in the back of their performance against Dundee. So there's a bit of a bit of pressure on them just now as well to to keep keep close to to Celtic and and keep the pressure on. But you can only see that gap getting bigger at the moment. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking at my my date today in my phone, and I'm realising I'm probably not going to have you on until maybe after the World Cup. So I'll ask you the obvious question: probably the first person to ask this this year, who's going to win the World Cup? Uh... You need to say Australia for all our Aussies watching this. <laughs> I can't see Australia winning it, mate. <laughs> More chance of Scotland winning it. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, that's a tough one, I think. I know. Uh, it's a tough one. Um, South American winner? I think it could be. I think yeah, it could we'll be. Yeah, we Yeah, I think it will be a South American team this time. Yeah. Um, no, I'm looking forward to it though. They, they were a lot better if Scotland had made it. Yeah. Um, but cheering on the Welsh now. 
Very good. I wonder why that is. Um, <laughs> right. Excellent, Jackie. We'll leave that. We'll catch up with you at some stage, maybe during the World Cup, maybe afterwards. Um, but yeah, great to chat. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow after the game, the reaction with me and Stevie. Speak to you then.